Welcome back to the StarCraft 2 World Championship Series European Premier League. Group A has proved to be a fantastic start to the week. We've got four days of awesome StarCraft 2 coming your way. This is just day one of four. It's only going to get even more amazing. But we've got one more amazing game to come this evening. It is the decider. But before we get to that game, let's just show you the brackets as they stand right now in an easy to understand format. And as you can see in the top half of the bracket, TLO going through. <laughs> it's like a fishing rod that I have, which has TLO on the end of the fishing rod. And every time I throw it into the crowd and mention his name, TLO, the crowd erupts. They're fantastic. They've been absolutely brilliant. OK, so as you can see from the brackets, we're down to our final deciding game. Will it be two Europeans in the round of eight? Or does Korea have one little sneaky trick up their sleeve in the form of 4GG against Strelok? It's time to hand you over to our wonderful commentary team. They've been fantastic all night. Please give them a big hand. It's Kolaris and Apollo. Thanks very much, Paul. Right, this is it. This is the final series, Apollo, yes. to determine who will advance on to the round of eight. And it's a big one. All right, I'm just going to do this right now, get out of the way. Prediction. Go on, tell me. What's your prediction? They're Both listening. players play the same. They're listening. Go on, watch, go on whisper it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my uh, original prediction from uh, the groups yes. and go 4GG. Okay, 4GG. Okay. Okay. All right, so we are going to be getting into the map vetoes in just a couple of moments' time. I think probably going to win as well, yeah. um, just because he's so good. But we'll see, as here we do have the Mad Vitos coming down. Strelok is going to be eliminating first, I think. We'll see. I'm interested to see, because they both play the same style. Yeah. So I'm, it, I guess it's going to come down to not what map I can eliminate to make my strategy better, mm -hmm. but more so what map I just don't want to play on, like Newkirk. Because both players, like, it's not really yeah. out there anymore. We don't really play it. Let's just get rid of it. I think that, uh, to come back to what you were saying, though, about the same style, it is indeed very similar. But when you have... The, there is the aggressive edge of 4GG, right? He's playing the, the same as Strelok's playing, but he makes utilization of those medevacs a little bit earlier. Yeah. So uh, Strelok's going to have to w watch out for that. Whirlwind goes, as does Daybreak. I won't be surprised if we have Akalon, Belshir, and Neoplanet S in the end, to be honest All with right, you. Let's have a look at the last one. I don't think it's going to make too much difference between yeah. these two guys, to be honest. Especially when you look you at, go. you know, look at Marine tank versus Mech. Yeah. Like we saw previously. But we're going to have a tank off. A tank off. I'm going to have a tank off in this game. I'm going to see who's got the best tanks. Yep. Uh, in Strelok's spare time, he actually does play World of Tanks. He's been. Yeah. Practicing water tanks, but get better at StarCraft. He's getting his Apparently. position right, yeah. strategical movement right, and those are our last three maps. Akalon, Belshir, and Neo Planet S, as you, as you predicted there. All right. So, yeah, as you said before, uh, not making a huge amount of difference because of the styles these guys play, but <laughs> hell, someone could actually just mix it up and just go crazy uh, and do something completely different uh, than what, from what we saw. But we've already seen that 4GG can mix in those Banshees, make them work really, really nicely there, a little bit earlier, uh, but Straylock does take the precautions with the Viking counts early on as well, so yeah. that could keep him in good stead. It's gonna, I think it's going to come down to how strong is Straylock's defense against what we know is eventually going to come from 4GG. He's going to get in there, yeah. and I think 4GG is a bit more flexible with his style. Compared to Straylock, yes. he seems to be playing over and over and over again the same. But obviously, before we get into this game, I do want to you know, extend an arm out there and say thank you very much to our Observer, who's yes. been doing an excellent job so far, helping me with the analysis as well. Uh, he is the Observer from Iron Squid, mm -hmm. the Frenchman. Yep. Uh, he's at Funker Starcraft. If you want to follow him on Twitter, say good job, at Funker Starcraft. Uh, he's been doing an excellent job, I think, Laris, and yep. giving a, lifting a bit of weight off your shoulders. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I've worked with him previously, uh, Iron Squid. Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, he's he's really good. I'm actually very impressed. He's been doing a very good job. Yeah, up and coming. Well, not really up and coming. I mean, he's Already pretty well there. established. He, I think he works for O Gaming over in France, along yes. with uh, Pompetude and those guys. So for now, we are have our maps. We have. Aklon Wastes, Belshia yep. Vestige, and Neo Planet S. I wondered if the streamer crashed then because they were staying perfectly still. Perfectly but then still. <laughs> now they're moving a little bit. This, so is a, this is a big game. This is a big game. This is 4GG who hasn't won anything in StarCraft 2. Yeah. Yes, he's a Brood War <clears throat> champion. 
He's won three titles in total, one, 1v1, one one, and then he's won two Pro Leagues. We look at Pro League, for a lot of StarCraft 2 viewers right now, they may not understand, you know, Pro League is massive. You know, you can see how EGTL are playing in it. It's a very highly competitive league. Yeah. 4GG's won it <laughs> twice, uh, with his team, of course. Strelka, on the other hand, has just been this mid-tier Terran player who hasn't achieved anything massive within StarCraft. He's been undershadowed by players like Castamaga and everyone. But today is his chance to say, I am a good Terran player in Europe. I'm here to defend the territory against you, 4GG. This is not your land. We'll see if Strelok can bring it over to, as you can see, Park Jisoo. And we do have that gentleman spawning down in the bottom right-hand corner as our red Terran. Give it up for 4GG. Second ESWC, third Assembly Summer 2012. He's always been on the cusp yep. of breaching into that first place spot, but it hasn't come just yet. And spawning up to the top left, as our blue Terran defending the European territory, it is Straylock. Looks like the crowd are behind Straylock, playing naturally here, defending uh, European territory here in the European Premier League. We'll see how this is going to go down. As we mentioned, identical styles are going to come out, but it's going to be about the small differences. If either one of these players lands at Hellbat drop and the other doesn't, yeah. that actually can be game ending, or at least giving a massive advantage to the other player. So this is going to be a very tense series. We already see Gas first coming out by Strel, opening up this series with a bit of fire, a bit of fireworks getting in Lighten to it. get that factory, get that technology running nice and early. Very, very important here. And I mean, just to come to these players, uh, in terms of Straylock's TVT, during Heart of the Swarm, he's taken mm. 26 map wins to 21. So far more evenly yeah. spread for a player like Straylock against 4GG, who now sits at 46 and 3. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 46 and 3. Still it's a big difference. And you look at stats, hardcore stats, massive difference. And then if you look at, you know, stats when we talked about how they've achieved 4GG as we saw, he had a great last year, really, really good summer in 2013. And summer's almost, I mean 2012, but yeah, summer's yeah. almost here for 2013. And before we get kind of fully in depth of this match, I actually want to give a, a shout out to, uh, I'm going to pronounce this terribly, Go but on. Eliguac. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've butchered that, so my apologies. Uh, yes. But still, they are doing some really, really good stats work, and that's where I get all my stats from in terms of going into this. So you should definitely check out their website, guys. Uh, very, very in-depth in terms of analysis. All right. Well, this game is beginning as we have no scout from 4GG. Kind of a tendency of, is not to scout at all. Mm -hmm. um, can be a weakness, can be ex exploited, especially in longer series. Not so much in a best of three, sometimes but we do have the faster factory from Strelok. He go Actually, he goes in, and that's a good scout, because he sees the Marine and then a reactor. Yeah, so yeah. he knows that 4GG is doing what 4GG always does. Yeah. Every single game, I think, apart from the one on Whirlwind, where he went Command Center first, this is his bread and butter opening. The same drop, Hellion Marine. I expect to, to see the follow-up here. But Strelok is taking a page out of MMA's book when it comes to a different opening. Mm. Yeah, just kidding. Little bit of mines out to kick things off here, along with that second gas as well. He's going to go for the star pot, positioned in a slightly mm. odder place here. So, does he end up going for that widow mine marine drop that we saw before? I think he's going to open up how he played on Daybreak earlier against MMA, mm. where he goes for the two widow mine and a marine drop, yes. and then just follow it up with tank Viking marine, the all-round most safe, solid composition to defend against everything. Tanks have great damage per second when they're unsieged, combined with marines that can shoot things down from the air and vikings in combination, it's a great solid defense. And then he'll want to expand shortly after, but as you can see, without an expansion already down for Strelok, again, I, I said it earlier, he's gonna need to do damage. And needing to do damage is from from four above SEV kills here. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a success. He, you know, five, six, seven is great. That's where he's ideally aiming for, to be honest. Now you're right. That investment is so important here. Whereas, whereas 4GG, he's gone for the command center. It's his economy is going to be a little bit boosted here. So Straylock has to even things up. We have uh, a few Hellions now on the way for 4GG. So once again, playing his uh, standard standard play. Still those Marines pumping on out, but not really too many, as uh, <laughs> it would be so rare if he were to go into some kind of weird bioplay. Did you know that 4GG streamed 184 hours last month in April? Good God, that's <laughs> that's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours of streaming, isn't it? And yeah. He doesn't care about showing his style. He's well, the player that is like, right, this is how I play, and I'm this is how I'm going to beat you with it. There's yeah. nothing you can do. But we'll see. Yeah. 
about Strelok's drop as it approaches the main base. Was it semi-spotted there, I think it was? Yeah, I think so. It was on one side of the brush for a second, and then when we actually checked the vision, it just got flown over. So technically, to our eyes, he didn't see it, but he did Ooh, in the end. Although, nice word of mine placement there. Yeah, he's actually not reacting as uh, one would normally. He brings back the units now, but that word of mine catches one of those Hellions that gets disintegrated so quickly. And a few SCVs there, too, on that. So nice pickups thus far. Yeah, and he picks up, gets out there. Ideally, yes, would like to pick up the word of mine as well. Nice pickup there by Strelok. How many SCVs kill? I guess that's around three to four, which yeah. is acceptable. It's on the lower end of success, but it's okay. Um, but does still have the option to come in and do a bit more if he dare chooses. Um, mm. He should obviously want to, but we mentioned it throughout today. TVT has a lot of equal drops oh. coming out. As you drop, I drop. And oh, he's going to bait Hellions over, I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to pull in, and the Hellions are going to chase. He's going to pick up and look for the kill. Ooh. He's gonna... Uh, ah, okay. no. It's just a little bit out of the range. To bring the Hellions back that far, it would be very, very difficult, yeah. I feel, here. Ideally, Marines long. would be best there, because yeah. Hellions, they got the range and... Yes. Mm. I mean, why would the Hellion chase the Medivac, right? It doesn't yeah. make too much sense. Maybe a Viking, you know, but... Whoa. We won't be able to kill the Viking. Didn't there, trigger. So. Did he see it, though? Because you, so you can see it for a second just before it triggers. So, did he see it, then? Yeah, I'm not sure if he has or not. Mm. But uh, either way, we do have a little bit of a, a push coming out here from Strelok. Two yeah. tanks, a couple of Vikings, Marines. This is you know, his standard composition follow up. No command center down yet. He's actually building another tank behind this. He's getting himself set up. Uh, well, he can get well, himself set up on this natural pretty it's easily. Have a nice contain here. He always yeah. has the option. I think he had the option in one of the other maps earlier today, too. And this is difficult. I think compared those... to MMA, where who, MMA saw this and got tanks. There's no tanks here. Yeah. This is going to force a lift off. This is going to be annoying. There's Marines in the Medivac behind this for 4GG, so he could technically flank if he wants to. He's actually dropping them behind this, trying to catch some of the siege tanks. Oh, we'll nice. get one. And now the Marines for Strelok have to be a little bit more cautious about moving forwards. Yeah, this is going to be a, a little bit problematic for 4GG to deal with those two tanks. They're sieged up. Yeah, this is, this is a nice move from Strelok. But remember, this, at the same time, he's only containing his opponent, but what is he containing from when Strelok doesn't even have his own second command center yeah. down? So he's going to have to get his own eventually here. But this isn't the, the end of the world for 4GG. Took minimal losses, picked up, got out. It's on the way in terms of that command center. The Banshee, though, for 4GG is quite useful as long as he can retain some air dominance. It's two Vikings to two right now. They're pushing into this location with the Marines always in yeah. position to actually deal with that. Especially if he loses one, don't... Oh. Well, the Vikings could poke forwards if we wanted to. Yeah, if the Banshee comes around and starts picking off the tanks... Uh, the thing is, the Hellion count is continuing to rise until he got supply capped for that second, but mm. it wasn't for very long. If the Hellions keep going, they can actually run down and kill everything. Even a pot shot fire there, I think, might be viable if uh, the Marines poke up too far. Could be. Good repair all there by 4GG to kick things off here, making sure that he keeps them alive. He knows he has to have that air dominance. And 4GG still yeah. brings those Marines back in the middle of the map to try and catch things out, but this is still too good a spot. Oh, by I think, think 4GG is going to go for it in a second. Well, I thought he was with those Ooh. Marines at the back. He needs to actually start to break this. Banshee is out. Viking no cloak. He needs to get rid of the other opponents, Viking, before that can be really successful here. But a slight contain again, but still, 4GG maintains. Uh, Supply advantage, his unit count is increasing. Hellion count's getting scarily high. Yeah. This uh, this is interesting because for GG, out of the times he's actually played TVT and got such a high win rate, I don't think he's met Strelok. So Strelok could be the person here to actually shut down for GG in terms of that TVT dominance. How many people play mech nowadays is not that high, so... Yeah. 4GG's experience against other mech players may not be as high as maybe Strelok's, I don't know. It, mm. it depends on practice coming into this for sure. But he's still got this great contain going. He forced the removal of the infrastructure from yeah. that very front of there. So he's denying a little bit of production. And Ooh, that's, oh. I was going to say, if yeah. he scans and sees that, that's kind of a, a nasty scan because, yes, you lose a bit of money. And now it's like every second that goes past, he now knows that he's in trouble. Yeah. So the time Sherlock is, on is now starting to gain a massive advantage in this game because of this contain which has escalated up to four tanks and quite a few marines. Mm. And if 4GD doesn't do something soon, he's going to find himself playing for quite the deficit in this game. It's going to be up to Hellions to break out of this, but they're yes. all going to come down the ramp. They're going to be very clumped together, and that's going to take a lot of damage. It's, it's not going to be cost-effective in the end, unless this Banshee can do something where he finds a little bit of room, actually. Yeah, I mean, we have Banshee... We, we have tanks of uh, 4GD zone, so what he's going to do is try to get the tanks to fire on the marines so that when the Banshee's targeting the tank, Mm. The Marines come in to deal with it, the, they then they get hit by tanks. So slowly but surely he'll push this off. As long as that Banshee doesn't get sniped! 
Ooh, it's so low. <laughs> well, he does still have four Vikings against three. Yeah, he needs to repair it and do the same yeah. because eventually he'll break out. But Ooh. like I keep saying, the, the longer that yep. he's contained, the worse it is because behind this Stralix should actually be adding on the gases there. Like, he absolutely should be adding them on now. Yes. Uh, I know he's a bit occupied with dealing with this, but if he adds them on and grabs a third command center, keeps on adding on production, he's in great shape. I really, like, really good shape. I like what Pogigi's doing behind this, though. Getting himself that third command center, but Stralix's adding on to his infrastructure now. And this Banshee's doing a pretty good job, slowly but surely breaking out, but he needs to break out in a timely fashion to the point where Stralix's new infrastructure doesn't get into full force. Ooh, nice couple of hits there from Strelok onto the uh, Vikings with the Marines. The, the the third command center's down and the gases are down now. Yeah. What we'll see is Strelok, who has been at a supply disadvantage all game, it will take the advantage very shortly here. And then once again, still poking forwards. 4GG doing a very, very good job with this. Ooh. But all those Hellbad drops trying to catch out 4GG where he's not paying attention. All of the SCVs have to be pulled off a line to deal with that. And in total, lost a few workers. I, th dead so I think far. he has to lift up and expand anyway now. That There's only two tanks. He actually yeah. has to go now. Even if the tanks were still there, he still has to move out. Even if they would just float, if the command center was floating above the natural and the tanks were still there, it's better because the expansion is going to come down Whoa. sooner. That's a lot of tank, a lot of Hellions. That is a, that is the train What's of Hellions. What's back at home to defend, though? I think he should be fine. Yeah, yeah. he's got Hellbats, tanks, Vikings. He, as long as those two tanks make it home, then I think Strelok is uh, is okay. He's going to start working on me. He has Blue Flame at the same time, though. That could be quite a lot of damage here. That's a lot of DPS that he's going to actually soak up in these uh. Hellions. The Banshee's coming along as well. The Vikings get landed. He needs anti-air along with this. The Hellions alone are able to run over a lot of what Strelok has. And that repair no will so probably falls down. All those SCVs, oh. goodbye. Oh my god. He couldn't get everything back in time and... 4GG just wins. He just like, yeah. I'm playing Terramus and Terran and I don't lose games. Like, I don't care what you do, how long you can tame me, how oh, much of an advantage you get, I still win. 4GG, incredible. I can't believe you actually pulled that camera attack off. It's... As the player going for the contain, you're there, you're saying, well, I'm going to get the economical advantage behind this. I'm going to get the production advantage. He just gets it. But yeah, like that little slight smirk there. <laughs> but you're right, he just gets it. He just knows, well, you've been doing this. I slowly but surely picked off your tanks. How much can you really have behind that? Yeah, Strella just, he lost the tank. The second tank was unseized, yeah. or was sieged on the ramp, so it didn't have the high ground advantage either. He couldn't get there. Strella was probably saying to himself, like, I. I had that. I, ah, uh, I could be, you know, still playing that game through if that hadn't have worked. And 4GG picks up the win, and that puts Strelok in a very difficult position. I, th I think he's got to get his notebook out. He does have to get that notebook out. That's that's imperative here. <laughs> Going into game number two, 4GG now 47 and three. Does he take it to the 48 and 3 or does Strelok yeah. pull it back for Europe, for Ukraine, for himself here? Woo! Woo! Apparently, the crowd seems to think so. <laughs> All right, well, we are loading into the next one. Remember, it is Belshir Vestige. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way we can see lots of aggression again. That's where we saw MMA open up with uh, the, the mind drop into the Banshees. Yep. But Strelok. Ooh, but he, once again, he upset with that, I think. On Belshir Vestige, 4GG just got it again. He yeah. just knew when to go with Banshee Hellion. We are going to jump into game number two, guys. Potentially the final game of the night between 4GG and Straylock, as we have spawning down to the bottom right hand corner as our Red Terran. Currently one game up. Give it up for 4GG. Spawning up to the top left as our blue Terran representing the Ukraine, representing Europe at this point. Give it up for Straylock. Straylock! I think they're going to break the studio. Yes, <laughs> maybe. In a very uh, active crowd, remember if you guys maybe live in Germany and watching the stream, like, wow, it sounds pretty fun. You actually can mm. come down tomorrow, the next day, the next day after. Yep. Come hang out, come go crazy in the stands. And uh, it'd be a lot of fun. I think it's seven euros. Yeah. The entrance fee. Pittance. Pittance. You get free drinks. Yep. It's pretty good. Snacks. It's pretty good. And it is snacks. There are snacks, are there? I, I think so. I think so. Like uh, the snacks. Yeah, they're definitely snacks. Uh, free drinks. Hang out. Watch a lot of StarCraft. Meet your favorite players. Meet your favorite players. MC. MVP was in here before yeah, he as was. well. Yeah. And uh, you meet these guys. They're hanging out. They're practicing. You guys, if you want to come across, do it. 
All right, so getting into game number two, Belshia Vestige. 4GG on this map against MMA. Once again, he just got it. He just knew when to push out despite taking a lot of damage. 4GG is able to calculate, despite taking that damage, what he needs to do. And well, Straylock opening up. Very cool. Okay. Um, opening Command Center first. Opening, when you open Command Center first, Kolaris, mm -hmm. you are absolutely playing the defender player. Yes. He has to make sure his timings are right. The timings that 4GG is going to hit with his drops and when his aggression comes is like around that 630, depending mm -hmm. on how heavy it is. If it's just light, it's going to be about seven minutes. And it, it, depending on how heavy it is, it can increase up to eight minutes. He now sees the command center first, 4GG. And to be honest, I think he's like, okay, I will hit you hard. Yeah. And I will destroy you. I think, I'm 4GG. Yeah. I think the one saving grace for Straylock here is the fact that the, right now there is no Reaper on the way. If, if there were, by chance, I think Straylock's looked at 4GG and said, well, you're not really going Reaper opening at this yeah. point. So uh, I'm able to do this a little bit easier than I would have been before. Mm. But a Reaper opening against this is so Yeah, annoying. like if you open, I mean, what was the game from uh, from GSL? I think it was uh, Innovation versus Flash again in their group of death. It was uh, yeah, an yeah. instant win for Innovation who opened up double barracks Reaper against Command Center first. It's just yeah, an instant win. Um, so yeah, th this is a calculated build from Straylock who's saying, there isn't super early aggression coming from 4GG, so I can get away with it. Mm -hmm. As long as my defensive timings are right for when it comes 6 minutes, 6.30 and above, yes. then I could have an advantage when it comes to economy. The question is, will it be ready? Will his defense be set up? That means he's going to have to get his factory down fast. Is he playing with Winter Mines? Is he playing with Hellions all over the place? Does he have supply depots in the right place? His main base to see the drop coming in. Mm. It's, it's going to come here. <clears throat> With that uh, actually, right look at this as well. 4GG, uh -huh. upon realizing this, every single game so far, that he hasn't done this until now. With moving out with two Marines and an SCV, he's like, i got to pressure you. I'm yep. going to pull your SCVs down. I'm going to slow you down a little bit, even though he's not really going to be able to do anything here. Oops. And to be honest, I don't know why that Sherlock should be going all the way with this. I don't think it's too <laughs> smart to go all the way. Yeah, this he's is going to go for it. It's done what it needs to do in the end. Although I mean, he could get a Marine. He was the Marine. But he lost a lot of mining time in that. Yeah, I'm not too sure if it's worth it or not. Little honest. rib cage. A little guy. But look at 4GG as well. He's actually put his command center on the low ground for the first time in the series yeah. as well. Just like small little things. Because previously, it would always be in the main base because you don't know what your opponent's going to do aggressive-wise. You can't defend against aggression on two fronts. So it's easier in just the main base. It's funny because now that you, you word it like that, does Ooh. this now give 4GG a slight advantage in terms of him getting that economical base that he likes to get? He doesn't have wants. to do as much damage yeah. as he could have or should have had to do before. But with this bunker down, these <laughs> Marines moving out won't do anything. And Armory coming down as well here for Strelok. Uh, the Starport's finishing up in the background for 4GG, so Medivac will be on the way. 4GG is looking for an easy uh, pickoff here. He's going to be a little bit sad. And this is really nice from Strelok. He's making, he got the bunkers nice in the first place. He's creating a supply depot wall off nicer than second place because that stops the Hellion run by. Yep. So now how does 4GG approach this? Does he now drop everything in the main base, ferry everything over and go as one attack? I think maybe. I think that might be his option. Although that being said, Straylock has done a good job in the past of putting supply yeah. depots around the sides of his bases. Uh, and he's even getting those Widow Mines yeah, as so well. So if he now focuses one position with Widow Mines, knowing yeah. that the Hellions can't run by on the natural, it seems to be that he's setting himself, not, uh, setting himself up nicely. Then with the armory down, if he defends and then counter drops himself with Hellbats, yeah. this that's is a out. good opening. And look at this. Whoa. Two Widow Mines will kill the many back. Oh, and he's actually looking to load up the uh, this is Hellions so good up to the high Strelok. ground. This is so smart. He's oh, he's going to boost on in. Oh. Oh. This is gonna... oh. I don't think it's in range. Oh. I don't think it's in range. One. Oh. Ah, the second one didn't go off. Oh. I guess the Marines, though. And Hellions. He knows that he knows they've got no charge. He knows they've got no charge, so he's gonna drop yeah. in once again here. He tries to deal with that. He knows there's two because it was a reactor at a specific timing. These Hellions for 4GG, there's not really that much area for Strelok. Ah, uh, Strelok wanted the Medivac to actually go down there. The, the mines are gone, and 4GG's in again. And Strelok hoped and prayed to God that those Widow Mines brought down yeah. the Medivac, and it didn't work. And 4GG enters the base, and 4GG is oh killed. And everything God. we could have a fast 2 0. 16 workers have already been killed here. Yuen Carry Station, 34 workers to 27. The Hellions sitting on top of these production facilities. Oh. He's trying to land Vikings, trying to defend here with these Hellbats. A nightmare situation for Strelok. This is, this is a nightmare for him. The thing is, is that Hellbats can't reach Rising. this army. They can't reach this army. The Hellbat is just chasing, but it cannot shoot at the Hellions. 21, 22. 
two, accounting lessons with Apollo as 4GG just goes on and on to slaughter SEVs. This is a disaster for Strella. Uh -oh. You know, we asked, we asked the question at the start of the series, is his defense going to be there? It was so close. It was. It was so, so close. Had those two winner mines been a smidge forwards towards that ramp, then he would have been able to defend that. But taking 24 worker losses right now, 40 workers to 27 in favor of 4GG. Wow, that is such a great position to be in. Look at the income. Wow, it's actually very cool because a, co a couple of mules just came down. Mm. But as soon as they go off, it's going to drop down below a 1,000 probably here. And that is disastrous for... Strelok, who is, is mentioned, is defending European ground at the moment, but so far 4GG, just a couple of minutes away from a victory here, potentially, if it keeps going in his favor. He's got a third command center down, he's got all these Hellions out again. If any loose attack comes out from Strelok, these will deal with it, that's for sure. Yeah, those Hellions really putting themselves on the map here. And, I mean, oh, does he, did he get Blue Flame finished already? I think he did, right? But I'm not sure. No, not yet. Oh, not okay. Yet. Right. Well, He's only just had reactors on them. So ah, far, so. okay. So, still does not have the blue flame there, but you can imagine that 4GG will go for that at some point, and that's going to make it a little bit harder for uh, Strelok to deal with. The thing is, is that Strelok's going Hellbat tank yeah. against Hellion uh, with whatever he wants to go from that point on. Yeah. The Hellbats are going to have the same problem as they do normally against Bio. Uh, although, that being said, he is mixing them to help some Hellbats as well. So, uh, it's just the fact that they just don't have the range to start attacking them. Uh, they don't, and they're going to have so little in numbers. Strelot needs to pull off a move such as this, as we're seeing, yeah. to be able to pull that SCV count down again. 4GG is expanding to the middle. He's like, I'm done with this game. I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. All my waypoints will be forward from now on. I'll have a little bit to defend at home, and then I'm going to be hitting and hitting and hitting. And that aggressive attitude from 4GG is going to work in his favor as he spots that medivac too, which will give him a heads up. These SCVs may actually survive, because I don't think Strelk's expecting that to be there. And that medevac now realizes that, oh wait, I have indeed been spotted. Yeah. We'll have to move out for now. 4GG reacting in due time, even saves the Hellion at that point. I would push it away from the Watchtower. The problem is for Strelok, they're playing with the same units. They're playing yeah. the same style, but Strelok is miles and miles and miles behind. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a third base. 4GG can take the gases here shortly, can add on more production, keep on upgrading, where, 4G, uh, where Strelok is forced in a situation where he either plays from behind, and tries to take a third base, which he isn't at this current point, or just moves out to try to attack. But how often can you move out and attack into a player that's got tanks? You actually can't. Yeah. So Strelok's forced to play from behind in this position. And there's not really even much going in his favor. It's not even an upgrade advantage or anything like that. Oh, those Seven Hellbats Hellions moving down. per cycle is an incredible amount of Hellions. And those Hellbats are just going to melt. They moved out into exactly the wrong position. This might just be 4GG's time to go. Getting that many free kills is a big, big boost here. Whoa. He morphs them into Hellbats as well, just to tank a little bit more damage at this point. But and even a Hunter Seeker missile on a Thor, as well as an Auto Turret, trying to kind of seal this off. but. He lost quite a lot there, despite doing a lot of damage himself. 4GG lost, but at the same time, it's he's, as this tweet says, breaking the TVT metagame. Yeah. Mass Hellions coming back into fashion. 4GG says yes, with the transformation upgrade as well there. Mm. He's got the gases coming down. He's going to keep building units. He's going to upgrade further and further and further. Strelok still needs a big hit in this game, whether it be Hellbat drops making the way to the Mineral Lines, some kind of army that he wins cost efficiently, because if not, then 4GG is gliding to move on to the round of 16. He's moving yeah. on. 124 supply to 94 right, right now. And I think that, you know, in the end, uh, just for newer players out there, like, uh, the Hellions transforming into Hellbats in, in an engagement like that is kind of weird. It's yep. it, You lose a lot of damage time to actually do that, but 4GG assumed that he was far enough ahead to uh, make that work. So um, he's he's still poised to take this game, though. He's, he's so far up in terms of supply. Well, here comes another desperation move. He has to do something here. He, he really needs some some strike down onto uh, 4GG's economy, 4GG's force. It's going to be difficult to get that onto the force. Mm. So the only way that Strelok can do this is through the economy. We'll see if he's going to uh, be able to land this down. I saw in the minimap that 4GG's looking for the third base, still isn't there, so he knows he's in good position. A scan goes down for Strelok, revealing the third base. And then he he's probably sighing a little bit. He knows he's in a bad position. Yeah. But let's see how well this drop can do. He's trying to make it work. That medevac's going to move into the natural here. See if it can do some damage itself. And should be able to get a few SCVs, actually. So one or two already end up falling. 
and there is a bit of a huge engagement uh -oh. actually going on in the middle of the map as well. Those Hellbats have all transformed here. Forge G gonna march on against these tanks. Strelok noses in a bad position. He has to retreat uh -oh. out. They're getting caught going around the side there, and he needs to siege up as he gets to the top of this hill. The Thor needs to come into in to fight as well. But look how many units yeah. 4GG has. So much ability to tank. The siege tanks have to engage this completely unseized. But 4GG, meanwhile, behind all of this, using his surge tanks unseized as well. The Hellbats just tank too much. The Vikings land. He doesn't even need that air advantage anymore. And the last Thor will end up falling. Straylock so pinned back. He tries to siege up, trying to deal with all of this. But the damage from 4GG just too great. GG. 2-0 for 4GG who moves on to the round of eight with TLO today, Kolaris. 4GG had a lot, everyone had a lot to prove today. Yes. TLO passed the test and now 4GG goes through alongside. Once TLO was out of the picture, then 4GG had yeah. the pathway set in stone. Yeah. His Terran versus Terran stands the test of time once again and he advances on to the round of eight. That's right. Unfortunately, Sherlock will fall down to the later stages of the Challenger League, yes. finishing in third place, not fourth today. But, you know, that man right there, his excellence when it comes to Terran versus Terran, carried him through, was looking shaky against TLO. Mm -hmm. But then when he's into his matchup, into his prime, we saw what he was able to do in, in games that you wouldn't have even thought he could win. Yeah, this is this is an impressive run by this man. If if it goes into the bracket and he ends up being against having like a, a yeah. for example a Terran stacked bracket in that round of eight, then he could just go all the way. It would be yes. so difficult yes. for anybody to stand up against 4GG here. He is a monster in this matchup. And he's got a long time until he needs to play again and he exactly. can work on his weaknesses against yeah. Zerg and a little bit against Protoss and get ready for the round of eight. That's like almost two weeks away. Yeah, he has so much time now. The advantage of going first here in these groups and that is going to wrap things up for well uh, the games at least for yeah. today yeah lots more still come though yes, there is more. the extra show that will be happening once we finish today so stay around i'm sure red eye will let you know exactly what's going on yeah uh, but for now that'll be it for us at the caster's desk at least we're going to send it over to an interview with mr red eye Yes, thank you very much. I'm with the victor for GG after what was a straightforward win in the end. Congratulations for going through. You are through to the round of eight. And uh, I guess the second match was quite straightforward. So let's talk about the first one, because in the first game, you seemed to be a long way behind. How did you come back like that? Uh, <laughs> 이긴 타이밍 딱한 타이밍밖에 없었거든요. 자, 그 타이밍을 잘 캐치해 가지고 이긴 것 같아요. Yeah, I was actually losing, but uh, I had one timing where I could uh, come back and I got that uh, got that timing and uh, actually won. Okay, well congratulations. It was a good Woo! win on that, that first map. It set you up nicely. Um, your record TVT is just so good. What do you put it down to? <laughs> The other races are so strong that I only uh, that I only being good in TBT. <laughs> <laughs> only TBT. So how is it going to work if you get put in a group with some some Protoss and Zerg in the round of eight? How are you going to cope with that? Ah, 물론 방금 전에 한 말은 그냥 재미삼아 한 말이고 아, 테테전은 그냥 같은 종족이라 제가 잘 이해를 하고 있는 것 같아서 이기는 것 같고 어, 저그나 토스도 어, 충분히 이길, 이길 수 있다고 생각하고 있어요. It was kind of a joke. He says uh, that I think that um, uh, we're just Protoss and Zerg. He can play. I, I can play good and uh, TBT. My TVT is good because uh, I play T, uh, I play Terran, and um, I know a lot about this race. So that's the reason why I play TVT so good. Okay, one last question. Um, TLO has dominated this group today. How strong is he, in your opinion? <laughs> Yeah, 
좋은 플레이를 해가지고 어, 굉장히 어, 잘하는 유럽 저그 선수라고 생각합니다. I actually met him a lot in the ladder, and um, he really played very good in the ladder as well. And I think um, he's a very good Zerg in Europe. Okay, would um, would you say top five in the world right now? Ah, t i e r o Ah, 뭐 딱히 잘 모르겠. 아니요, 딱히 그렇게 강하 강하다고 생각하진 않아요. Uh, not really. Uh, I think I can win against him. Okay. Uh, well, we'll leave it there. I was trying to dig a little bit further and see if I could get something controversial out of him, but no going because he's a kind guy. Uh, 4GG, ladies and gents, has made the round of eight. Well played. We didn't get both Koreans through, but one is safely through. It's time to go back to some analysis then. We will break this one down with Apollo. Thank you very much, Red Eye. I'm here with Claris, my partner in crime for today. And we're going to be recapping a little bit, or just talking a little bit briefly, on today. What did you think of today? Um, in terms of the results for me, yeah. not that surprising, because I predicted <laughs> these two to go through anyway. But um, in terms of Straylock's play, very, very impressive. Mm. Uh, it's a shame for him to go out. I would have loved to have seen him advance on uh, to quite biasly have two Europeans go through, but uh, the Koreans also kind of holding themselves well as well. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed today's games. It's uh, my first WCS broadcast too, so I had a lot of fun. And I was very surprised at how well Strelok did today, despite not making it through. And then, of course, you got TLO. TLO doing pretty well, going through his first place. I mean, we can take a look. Well, a lot of fan support here for TLO. I mean, we can have a look at the entire bracket and kind of look at the overall yep, yep. results to see how things went down because it's been a good day, a good start of the first day of four. Any other highlights uh, for you today? Uh, play of the day, Swarm Host drops. Play of the day was absolutely uh, Swarm Host and Broodlord transition yeah. from TLO. Uh, I, anything else you want to add in before I pass it over to Red Eye? I mean, day one has been a great day for me. Uh, I'm sure it's the same for you. And I'm looking forward yeah. to day two tomorrow. Yeah, we have some fantastic players. Every single group in the round of 16 is just so ridiculously yeah. stacked. Considering that we said that in the round of 32 as well, so we're slowly but surely getting to the point where we have just the most elite of elite. In group B, we have Vortex, Baby Knight, Naniwa, and Happy. Yeah. That's going to be pretty insane. Intense. Yeah, as you can see, the, the two golden players of today, TLO and 4GG, first place and second. Stralk and MMA, unfortunately, down there at the bottom. But as you can see, there's the rest of the groups going on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Lots of awesome StarCraft. The same time, same place every day. Yep. 6 p.m. Central European right. summertime, as well as every other time zone that I can't calculate right now. Yeah. So <laughs> It's um, a lot of fun. I think Red Eye is ready for us, yeah. so I'm going to be uh, passing it over to Red Eye. Uh, any last thoughts before we go? Tune in tomorrow, guys. There you go. All right, Red Eye, take it away. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Your commentary team of Kalaris and Apollo. Apollo, Apollo, you. These, these guys honestly are absolutely crazy. The crowd have been fantastic all night long. We've had a fantastic evening of StarCraft II. Group A lived up to every hope and dreams we possibly had. It is TLO who goes through alongside 4GG. Don't forget, do not go anywhere. In around about 10 minutes' time, we'll be back with a very special show with that guy from Reddit, and we will be back in the studio for WCS Extra. It's been a fantastic night. We'll see you tomorrow. Woo!